Welcome to another episode of Tool Time Tuesdays with Carrie. This is episode two. As stated in the first episode, please note I am not a licensed carpenter. I am not professionally trained. I am self-taught, been doing DIY for seven plus years. I've had a lot of fails, a lot of fails, a lot of mistakes, and I've learned from those. And just hoping that my experience can inspire you to start your DIY journey in case you are a little intimidated and just needing that extra shove to start yours. So this episode, we're going to be going over the orbital sander, sanding techniques, the various grits of sanding um, discs that you would need to buy with orbital sanders. And I really hope that you find this episode helpful. This tool, it, to me, is a vital tool, especially if you're doing any type of woodworking. Uh, I've used it with every woodworking project. And you'll want to that fin for that finished professional look, this is a tool that you will need. So let's get started. There are so many terms like when you get into DIY that you just don't understand and at least I did not and just trying to remember some of those things that I didn't know what they meant. So for this, when people say grain of the wood, so sand with the grain of the wood, what they mean is sand, this is the grain right here, you would want to sand from bottom to top or top to bottom. You do not want to sand from across. And the reason that being is that it's not gonna give you the best look. The best look will be sanding with the grain of the wood. So that's what that means. The grain is these lines. So for this episode of Tool Time Tuesdays with Carrie, I'm gonna go over the orbital, orbital sander. This is a palm sander. Um, lots of brands make them. I just prefer DeWalt, Cobalt's good. Um, there's Milwaukee, there's Craftsman, and there's like higher end ones if you're like trying to get into the professional, like super professional, but DeWalt is a really good one. I just like it. This is around, I think it's under 200, and this one specifically has various speeds on it, which I really like. If you are doing, um, if you buy one that has like speed where you can change that, highly recommend doing it in a lower speed setting. Uh, because it can cause like squiggle marks in wood and you don't want that. Slow and steady really wins the race. Sanding is not the funnest, but it will give you that professional look and result on whatever project you're doing. And a sanding is going to be a definite step that you'll need to do within any woodworking project. So this is a great tool to invest in. And then once you get into the different types of grit. That's where it can become confusing. They're a little pricey. Um, I didn't buy all these all at once. It was over time. So um, something just to be note that definitely are gonna need various grits depending on what your project is. If you're stripping furniture and it's got layers of paint on it, you're gonna wanna get something that has a more coarse grit, like 40. So there's 40 and that is, a this right here is a lot of removal so if you have like two layers of paint something like that 40 grit is going to be good you don't want to press hard down on it because it does remove it will remove so you don't like it says right here it's coarse you don't want to press down on it you just want to make sure it removes it will make the piece of furniture or wood a little gritty but this is like if you're like trying to remove layers of paint or something so that's good for that and then I have a hundred and this is good for leveling. So this can level the wood. So after you, if you were to use 40 grit, I would recommend using the hundred after that. That would level whatever surface. Um, or if you're just trying to take like a light layer of paint off or like a light layer of like stain, you could use a hundred grit. And then there's 120. It's more fine, but it's still got a grit to it. It's a surface preparation. So really you could skip if your wood's pretty level you could skip 100 grit and you can move from 140 to or i'm sorry you can move from 40 to 120. it really is dependent on what you're working on and then it's your call so you might have to use all three of these you want an ultra ultra smooth finish afterwards so you might have to level the wood or it might already be level and then you could just skip to 120 to prep if you're gonna paint or stain. And then I have 220, I always buy them in big because 220 is the, the finish, like the ultra smooth finish that like you feel like the store-bought type furniture. So 220 is definitely something I rec, or the grit I definitely recommend having that's for the end product. I use that with everything, any wood 
project I do and I make sure to do that in so I sand in between. So I will do like a layer of primer and then I'll use the 220 and then I'll do the layer or like a coat of paint and then I'll do 220 again and then I'll do that second layer of paint and that is that really smooth finish. And then once you have like anything painted, if that's what you're doing, you can then move on to like a sand block, All right? So they have different sand blocks and I have various of them over until I've sanded a lot of things. Those all come in the same types of grit. Those are for like hard to reach places or if you're saved with my closet when I redid our closet, the dresser fronts. I didn't want to take the orbital sander over it because I was scared it was going to take the paint off. So I just lightly sanded with a 220 grit block. So this is the sander. Definitely recommend investing in this tool if you don't have it. It is great for any wood. You will need it for any woodworking project if you want it to look like a professional end result. Also with that comes safety. So at minimum, you need a respirator. I bought this at Lowe's. You can get them like anywhere. You want a respirator, you need to protect your lungs. Just to give you a visual of what I'm talking about in regards to holding the palm sander down too hard or operating it on a higher speed. This was an earlier project. It is our dining room table and I still love it, but I honestly need to re-sand it. See these squiggly lines in here? That is from the orbital sander. That's from me pressing too hard down and doing it at a higher speed. So this is the marks that will create after you go to stain it and they're, sometimes they're not that visible, um, but then once you start to stain it, you'll see that. So that's why it's important that if you're prepping, you go with one of the lower grits if you're just trying to level it out, and then you have to go with a finisher, like a 220 grit. With this sander, so it comes with a bag, you can buy a vacuum and um, so the dust doesn't go everywhere. This is supposed to act like that, uh, that protector to, to grab most of the dust, but that's just impossible unless you have like a vacuum system. Um, you will wanna change out the discs. Like you'll be able to tell when you're sanding if it's time to change the disc out. Um, you could easily just feel it and see if the grit's gone from the, the one that you're doing. So, um, or the one that you're using. So you'll wanna make sure that you empty this out. You wanna take good care of it and wipe it down. You can tell that I've used that sander quite a bit. It's lasted through several projects and they also make if you, for some reason, you tear this piece right here, that loop replacement right here, there is replacement kits that they have. Bought this and I will use it there. So if you guys end up seeing, if you can't purchase a brand new one, you can look on Facebook Marketplace, yard sales, and then know that even if this loop piece right here is ripped or something, you can go and buy like a $6 kit at Ace Hardware to replace that and it'll be like brand new. So for those super hard to reach places that I cannot get to with my orbital sander, I am just taking a 100 grit sand piece of sandpaper, folding it and pushing it in like this. Always make sure you go with the grain of the wood and that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or you can reach out to me on Instagram. My handle is a carry to fair designs. See you for the next episode.